Revivroom is better than people think. At a solid base 119 attack and 90 speed, its stats aren't that crazy. However, its steel poison typing gives it a lot to work with. This engine dude's saving grace is the pretty exclusive move Shift Gear. This doubles speed and gives a plus 1 to attack, and all of a sudden, this thing is zooming. While it's not necessarily bulky, it also has the ability Filter, which reduces damage from super effective hits by 25%, and this can sometimes be just enough to help set up. Once the gears have been shifted, its stab, iron head, and gunk shot can do some great damage, and even has coverage with high horsepower. Revivroom is definitely not the most insane Pokemon, but it can be a playmaker that people sleep on. Look, Revivroom is just a weird little guy. This thing is rarely used, but it's actually really fun. It has a couple different ways that you can use this thing. Today, we're going to be working with my favorite. This guy's going to be shifting gears all over the place. And if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free. It only takes you a second. I promise you will not regret it. And let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so first of all, my opponent has a team full of absolute threats. Everything on this team is scary. Most of all, we're afraid of the Dragapult. They do decide to lead off with this thing as I decide to lead off with the big meaty claws, and Jean-Claude gotta get his clawy ass out of here because there is definitely some type of fire coming my way and I can't really afford to let Scizor go down early. So, I decide to switch into the slug. I mean, we're not having fried bugs today, but if you're gonna, I guess the escargot seems like the kind of guy who wants to take a fire blast. As uh, they do actually connect on a fire blast, of course, that's not gonna do a whole lot. And my main goal with the Gastrodon is to either set up hazards or start to weaken this thing. Now, I don't really have a whole lot of answers for Dragapult. However, I know that this thing cannot quite knock me out here. I decide to go for the Stealth Rock. Turns out I actually go first. You're thinking to yourself, damn, this slug quick as shit. And you would be incorrect. He actually ends up going for the Dragon Tail. And that's one of the things that makes Dragapult so extremely difficult to play against. It can literally... This thing can do anything. They, Game Freak, truly, this is their favorite child. It can be physical, it can be special, it can phase with Dragon Tail, it can set up screens, it can burn you. It's just, this thing's an asshole. Anyway, that decides to draw out uh, the Pepto Abysmal Monkey, who is not really going to have a good time against the Dragapult, mostly just because I do die to a Dragon Darts. I'm a frail little monkey, and this is a crazy ass dragon who tries to launch his children at me, so I decide to just go right back into the Gastrodon. This thing is bold on the physical side, so they go for that Dragon Darts, and I'm actually able to hang on there, which is actually pretty nice. Um, and uh, again, mixed attacking Dragapults can hit you on both sides and just be annoying. So, uh, at least it's looking like I can take one more of these. I decide to go for the Spikes, uh, just because I really want to prioritize getting up the Hazards, and uh, really try to punish some switching, but more importantly, whittle things down, break potential Focus Sashes, and uh, try to open the game for the sweepers in the back. So while I do have some hazards up, it doesn't mean a whole lot because I'm staring in the face of a Dragapult who I have not gotten any damage on, but it's fine, I, I have a plan. I do have to let the Gastrodon go down. Sometimes you gotta sack the slug, East Cargo from the east side absolutely uh, takes one for the team there, which does open the door for me to bring in uh, the Snowflake. So. Um, I decided to bring in the Cryagonal just because I know that with a Flamethrower, or Fire Blast rather, I definitely can take one because I'm especially defensive, and a Dragon Darts, I should be able to take at least one of them. So, they do go for the Fire Blast. It actually does connect, but he should go buy a Lotto Ticket Lane and two Fire Blasts in a row, unheard of. Anyway, uh, I do get the Freeze Dry damage there, which is actually exactly what I needed. I basically needed that for Chip. It doesn't look like Cryagonal is going to be super useful for me in this matchup. And it just kind of comes in here to get that chip, and I do die to a Dragon Dart. So on the physical side, I don't take attacks nearly as well. So I do go down there. However, finally, I can try to do something about this Dragapult, and that is going to be with the Scizor. I think, you know, earlier I was like, hey, you're actually pretty scary, but now that I've got some chip on you, a bullet punch is going to be enough to do it. Sometimes you got to use like a third of your team to take care of a Dragapult, and that is fine. At least I'm feeling like I'm in a pretty good position here. I have that Stealth Rock. I have the layer of spikes, and on the empty switch, they decide to go into the mag mortar. Old sausage lips over here is obviously a problem for Scizor, and I don't really have a whole lot that wants to hard switch into stuff. I, it turns out I have to go into the monkey here, and the, the only thing that kills me is a focus blast. It would be a crazy read, but I imagine they probably just go for flamethrower here, as uh, Ambipom does come in, and I can take that a little bit. Luckily, don't get burnt, because my plan here is to go for a fake out and also try to not get burnt. Sometimes you gotta pimp slap the shit out of the sausage lips, and luckily uh, it does not activate the flame body. Now I have to try again to go for the knockoff, 
to be able to finish this thing off. And it's always just scary making physical contact, you know, with the mag mortar. Luckily, though, I do not get burnt, and I'm able to take care of the mag mortar there, which is actually real nice. So, this now opens the door for another extremely scary mon to come out, and that is Iron Valiant. The thing looking like it's living in the damn future, all chrome and shit, like that SpongeBob episode. And it also is going to activate its Quark Drive with, with the booster energy, which does give it a speed boost. So, at plus one speed, this thing is extremely quick. And, of course, I have pretty much ran out of resources on shit to switch into. So, I decide to just stay in here with the Ambipom. His job is complete, and the Moon Blast does take care of me. And, again, at plus one speed, this thing is extremely quick. However, I do have an engine in the back pocket. I decide it's time. I'm going to go into... I old Optimus Prime over here in Rev of Room is ready to go fast. Buddy's wheels are made out of rocks and they're not even that circular. However, we're going to be zooming here. So, what I can do here is know I can take one attack from this thing at least. As they do go for that close combat, it's going to do well over half, which definitely hurts. However, that is going to allow me to go ahead and shift into maximum overdrive out here. I can go for the shift gear and... Shift gear is, it's a really unique move, mostly just because it gives you uh, the shark boost in speed with an attack boost, and at plus two speed, Rev of Room is looking like I am gonna be faster. I can then outspeed, go for that Iron Head, and destroy futuristic ass Iron Valiant. So, we're actually in a fantastic spot now with the Valiant. I have been conserving my Terra. I've been uh, kind of planning on this sweep in the back because it looks like the wind condition, as now they decide to go into the Iron Boulder. And here's where, uh, the hazards come extremely clutch, just because with that stealth rock, with the spikes, it, it gets some solid chip on the uh, on the iron boulder here, where it puts me in a spot where you know, an iron head should be able to knock this thing out. So, they decide to go for the Terra. They do not want the super effective hit. It turns out, luckily for us, it's just Terra flying to dodge ground moves. However, an iron head is just barely enough to knock this thing out. And Rev of Room is just out here making bitches neck spin around, so... <laughs> Uh, taking care of two of the Paradox Pokemon, we're still in a fantastic spot, uh, but there's still, you know, some work to be done. However, I'm an engine, and I'm not afraid of a damn bear. They decide to go into the Urshifu here. Uh, this thing, of course, does take the hazard damage, uh, and at this point, the only thing that knocks this thing out at plus one attack is a Gunk Shot. Sometimes you gotta roll the chance of Gunk Shot missing. Luckily for us, however, it is going to connect. That takes care of the Urshifu, and uh, Buddy did probably not expect is to be the biggest threat on the field as their final Pokemon is going to be the Sylveon. And of course, they have used up their Terra and we do have the Stab Iron Head to just finish this thing off. So, sometimes you pull out the old Uno Reverse and it comes in the form of uh, just a weird-ass engine Pokemon. I don't know. But, that's going to be the end of the game. And uh, Rev Room shows that uh, sometimes you just got to click Shift Gear literally one time and then profit. However, we are not quite done yet because we do have one more match for you. Hey, if you enjoy these multiple match uploads, make sure to leave a like. It really does help out the channel more than you know. And in today's game, I have another extremely good one against a very scary team. This one is against my boy Jamal from the Discord server. If you would like to battle in the community, definitely join the Discord. Uh, the link is in the description if you're interested. It is where I find a lot of my matches and test teams and things like that and just hang out. So, looking at this squad, first thing we notice is uh, Alola Ninetales with Aurora Veil vale is going to be quite annoying. And other than that, there's definitely some big threats in Hisui and Gudra, always with the Garchomp potential to set up. And let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so from looking at their team comp, it really feels like Greninja is probably going to be the lead. They do end up leading off with the Greninja as I decide to toss out the Gastrodon. Gastrodon's going to be pretty important in this matchup uh, in being kind of the only thing that I can do damage to the Hisui and Gudra. Also, definitely check the Greninja not being able to throw around Hydro Pumps as, uh, of course, they are going to go for that fast pivot with the U-Turn. And I figure this is a great opportunity for me to try to set up this Stealth Rock. Now, looking at their team comp as well, they do not have Hazard Removal unless it comes in the form of Scizor with Defog. So, they actually decide to U-Turn into the Scizor. They got a big meaty claws of their own as I just decide to lay up some Stealth Rock. So, at this point, I don't really know kind of what this Scizor is working with. Of course, it's a Pokemon that can be pretty versatile in terms of how it's going to be used. A lot of the time, you're going to see a Choice Band set. It could be potentially Swords Dance, but also it could be support with Defog. So it turns out this one is going to go for the Defog. Blows away my nice rocks that I worked so hard to set up. However, that is mostly fine. Now, I decide to stay in because if anything wants to take attacks from the Scizor, it's definitely going to be 
the Gastrodon on the squad. So I just decided to go for the Earth Power. It actually does a nice solid chunk. It's actually a two hit KO here, which is actually amazing. And at this point, I'm like, well, this is fine with me. I'm just gonna stay in, go for another Earth Power. Boom, turns out they actually have the Trailblaze. The one arch nemesis of the Gastrodon is a singular blade of grass, which does destroy me. And that is quite unfortunate. Not something you often see on something that seems like a support scissor carrying the Trailblaze. And I have been bamboozled, and I also I lose my Gastrodon early, which definitely sets me back. So, at least on the Revenge Switch, I decide to go into some meaty claws of my own. I bring in John claude as they actually just go right for the Bullet Punch to get some chip here, as a Choice Banded Close Combat is going to finish it off. So, while I am able to take care of the Scizor, unfortunately it does get the Defog off and also knock out the Gastrodon. So, we're going to have to work without hazards, and that is kind of scary. So... Uh, now they get a free switch, and Greninja now has a much easier time against the team just because of the fact that it can freely click Hydro Pumps without Gastron being around. And uh, at least, however, I do have a little nippy over here. Special defensive as Cryogonal is kind of my best answer to this thing at this point, as uh, they do go for that Hydro Pump and do connect. So it does actually a huge chunk of damage considering, you know, I am pretty damn specially defensive, but uh, Life Orb Greninja is not playing games out here. So. I just decided to go for the safe option here. I'm gonna click the freeze dry. I wanna try to get some chip off uh, on the Greninja. I don't imagine it stays in, but also I don't wanna make any crazy double switches here. So they decide to go into the Hisuian Gudra, who looks like it does not take a whole lot of damage from that freeze dry. Right? Obviously, I'm a fucking snowflake, so I'm not hitting stuff that hard, but I'm kind of banking on the fact that that is assault vested damage. So with that in mind, I decide to go into the Lux right here. Not a whole lot. Wants to deal with this Gudra, I really was kind of needing that Earth Power from Gastrodon here, but if there's anybody that can get some damage, it's going to be Luxray as long as this thing isn't a shelter set. So I do come in on a Flash Cannon, however, which is actually really nice because I can take that. It does activate my Flame Orb, which is going to go ahead and give me the Guts Boost. So I just decide to go for the Crunch. I really am just kind of prioritizing getting some Chip off on the Hisuian Gudra. In my mind, that thing is Assault Vested and some Chip is going to be really nice. So. What's actually really good for me is I go for the crunch and I uh, surprisingly take a nice little bite out of a Slowpoke Tail. As a uh, Slowking comes in, I get some huge damage there. As at this point, I'm just pretty much free to go for a Trailblaze. And uh, this Luxray with a gut set with Trailblaze, if I can get a speed boost a lot of the time, uh, this thing can actually do some pretty crazy stuff. So I go for the Trailblaze as they actually end up switching into the Greninja there. Uh, likely just expecting another crunch probably, uh, but uh, Greninja definitely goes down and I get a speed boost in the process. I'm thinking, hey, uh, Luxray is actually in a pretty good spot here. So they decide now to bring in the Alola Ninetales. So Alola Ninetales under the snow is actually one thing that can take a facade, even if I believe I went for the Terra Normal. So I opt just to go for the Supercell Slam. It's always a risky ass maneuver. Just because if you miss, I pretty much kill myself. So I do connect, however, and with the 50% defense boost to ice types, it is able to live, of course. And at this point, I am not clicking Supercell Slam twice. Anytime they have a ground type, they're definitely going to switch into that bitch. So I just decide uh, to go for the facade instead, and uh, I do make the correct call, as of course they do bring in the Garchomp. So. Garchomp isn't nearly as popular or scary as it used to be. However, this thing is still one of the scariest things to go up against, especially being behind an Aurora Veil, just because I know that there's nothing I can do to knock this thing out at this point. I just decided to go for another facade here and uh, touch dude's rough skin who needs definitely to have some fucking lotion on. But I, I do decide to let the Luxray go down here. It's kind of just in my best interest. Uh, to, uh, to just basically get some more chip here and try to get rid of these Aurora Veil turns. See, I knock it down to a range where I feel pretty confident that Bullet Punch uh, from a Choice Bandit Scizor is going to be nice. But first, what I can actually do is just bring back in the Snowflake. For whatever reason, Game Freak decided this Snowflake is fast as hell and has base 105 speed. I can outspeed and just knock this thing out with a Freeze Dry. So that is definitely my best option here, especially because you know the snow is up, so I can benefit from that 50% defense boost. However, they decide to go ahead and commit the Terra Fire, which is absolutely terrifying. I go for the Freeze Dry. Of course, now he's got candles on his head and it doesn't do much. But we actually get the Freeze, which is uh, both extremely unfortunate and also pretty clutch and also hilarious. Because you're telling me this guy just turned his ass into a Fire-type, but he lit himself on fire and then somehow 
still got frozen. It, it's ridiculous. But at this point, I just decided to go for the chilling water, thinking uh, I can just chip this thing to death. However, it does stay frozen, and uh, the snow is going to go away. This is both good for me because it's going to waste Auroraville turns, um, and uh, obviously Garchomp was likely going to go for some type of setup, likely in the form of a scale shot there. Uh, at this point, I'm just going to rapid spin. Honestly, anytime I get a freeze, I mostly just feel bad because it kind of is just like, well, uh, damn, you both committed the Terra and then got frozen. It's just, it, it's unfortunate. But I rapid spin there to get a speed boost that ensures that I'm faster than everything on the team. And uh, then I can finish it off with the Chilling Water. So while the Garchomp does go down, the game is far from one because they still have some extremely scary threats back there. So it's at least really nice to see that thing taken care of. However, I do still have to deal with this Dragon Snail asshole. And uh, Hisui and Gudra is still an absolute problem. I decided to just go for the freeze dry. I figure, you know, Kragonal probably isn't super useful at this point, and I kind of just need to uh, stall out some turns and also just try to get as much chip as I can. Of course, behind the Aurora Veil, freeze dry is damn near healing the guy, and uh, I actually am able to live a flash cannon because, again, the special defense on this guy is literally insane. Base 135? Shit's nuts. Anyway, I go for another freeze dry thinking, you know, there's no way that this thing is a shelter set because I'm thinking assault vest. Boom, it actually is shelter, and that is wildly unfortunate. And I've now found myself in a spot where, damn, with too many shelters, this thing is going to hard wall me, and it is extremely scary. I'm like, well, all I can really do is just stay in, go for some more freeze dries, try to get some chip, as my best answer in the back is looking like it's going to be the Terra Ground Reva Room. But I'm definitely going to need some chip off on this thing, and uh, it's not looking great. Because a lot of the time, while I do get this thing to half, I'm feeling like, okay, that's actually really nice. They do finish me with the flash cannon, which is great, but we have not seen the item on this thing. And likely on a shelter set, that means that it is gonna be working with the Chesto Berry. It's gonna be rest with the Chesto Berry to wake it up, and that is bad news. What's also bad news is while Optimus does have the super effective high horsepower powered up with the Terra Ground, I definitely am gonna need some boost with the shift gear. Now, one thing we do benefit from is the fact that I can at least take one attack from this thing, or even a few. So, I can go for the shift gear here, and uh, shit's feeling bad, it's feeling good, it, it, emotions are all over the damn place. As Gudra's emotions are like, I'm just sleepy. They go for the rest, that's gonna bring it back to full health. Not only that, somehow this thing is able to eat in its sleep, and it is going to end up activating that Chester Berry. So, gets to full health, this thing now has plus four defense, I have plus one attack and two speed and I am pretty afraid. I also know that I'm definitely going to need another shift gear if I want the two-hit KO with the high horsepower. So, so I'm fully shifted into maximum overdrive at this point, and uh, the engine is a turn-in. So they actually go for the flash cannon. I'm able to take a flash cannon extremely nicely, which is amazing. Does pop my balloon to shit on my parade, but hey, that's absolutely totally fine, because at this point, we are going all in on Rev of Room trying to pull this match back. So I can go for the Terra Ground, and uh, Terra Ground on Reva Room is actually super nice. A lot of the time it comes in clutch against like opposing Thunder Waves, uh, but more importantly in situations like this against Steel types, uh, it gives us a, uh, yeah, not a solid answer with the high horsepower with that stab. So I go for the stab high horsepower against a plus four defense. I'm able to do a huge chunk, which is actually uh, amazing. As this thing's actually gonna shelter. He probably predicts that I don't have the coverage here and a shelter is gonna bring this thing to maximum defense. However, uh, at this point, of course, I'm fast as hell and a high horsepower judging off the damage we just saw should just be enough to knock it out and it barely is going to take care of the Gudra. So with that thing finally gone, it feels like my engine is just out here running free. But uh, they do still have the Slowking here who, Slowking's got some defenses. He goes ahead and takes a high horsepower right to the head. Luckily, this thing does have a helmet and uh, it actually barely lives. Literally lives with like 5 HP is able to fire off a Scald, but we're able to barely live and also not get burnt, which is extremely clutch. And that is why the filter ability on the Rev of Room is actually cracked, because that is the only reason why I was able to live that. I can then finish it off with an Iron Head just to guarantee that I don't miss. Uh, and now the final Pokemon is gonna be that Alola Ninetales, of course. My speed is about 9,000 currently. And all I got to do is go for that Iron Head. So that is going to be the end of the game. Uh, I thought that was just a, a super interesting match. The freeze was wildly unfortunate, and it's probably a different game if that doesn't happen. But uh, super fun to see Rev of Room come in clutch once again. And uh, that's going to do it. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy. If you did, make sure to leave a like on the video. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time.
Peace out.